Hi, Chris. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Now play it back. I think we got the intro done. the intro done that's the important part we're always struggling to find those so yeah i just don't care anymore yeah well it's been an, almost a year since we is it, have recorded a podcast months, the last podcast months? we recorded was christmas and it's september damn end of september too wake me up when it ends oh shit just, hey, hey what was it green day oh f- what Man, is it? we were Father listening to all? some really good green day tracks earlier today i the- heard that billy joe BJ. BJ BJA. Billy, kind of like PT. Billy Joe Blaskovich. <laughs> um, I hear he thought he was doing a Prince thing in that Excuse song. Excuse me, what? Like he thought he was channeling Prince. No, it sounded what did I say, Portugal the Man? Yeah. It sounded like that. Well yeah, well, arguable. But not every really falsetto silly like No, I I just thought like the I, sound of I it kind of sounded like Prince. That. I don't care about Prince. I, don't know I was anything. actually shocked how upset people were when he died i was like i didn't even know people listen to prince yeah, i don't know he was one of those figures i mean yeah i guess so i just had no effect on me at all i never listened to prince i mean i was not happy about it well i wasn't happy of course <laughs> but i was shocked at like the despair among people like on facebook and stuff i was just like i had no idea okay imagine this in 70 years justin bieber has died <laughs> well Everyone just having that reaction. I, I, the idea that Justin Bieber lives to be like 98 is frightening. Well, I mean, advances, he's got a lot of money, advances in medical science. True. And By then, we'll, he'll be launched into space and like, what, preserved. Jettisoned into the sun? Oh. I love that. <laughs> well, um, yeah, a lot of time has passed, but you know, it's, that's how it is. We're not going to do the Skype thing. No, oh, no. There's never, such a never. great disconnect there. Some well, people can do plus it. Plus, this is like an occasion thing. It's an event. Yeah. This is, it's more important now. There's more gravity to it. True, true. You got a point. It makes things special. It does. And a lot, so much has happened. <laughs> I, can't, I don't even know where to start. That's the thing. These are always the difficult ones, and I don't want it to turn into some three-hour thing, you know, as much as those are fun. Those are better for like Christmas mm-hmm. situations. Just really oh, set in, event. set in with some hot cider by the fireplace and listen to us crackle. I mean, is there even a theme to this? Is just like the the Lords of the Fall? Ooh, <laughs> Lords of the Fallen. I don't know. Check Let's it out. Workshopping it. <laughs> um, I don't know. Of course, this is this one's gonna be a little catch upy. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. And what what Hines, all has happened? Hines before? or uh, like Hunt, Huntley brand? What, do, what is your catch up? That's a podcast That's his title. Podcast title. <laughs> um, like, if you had to have a preference, what would you say? Like, this is the one. If you even eat ketchup, I don't. Like, who buy? Do you buy ketchup? No, you don't eat food that needs ketchup. No, you're not an egg guy. It's ketchup, are you? No. Well, I'm scrambled eggs. Sure, yeah. I just, I just, I just like put it on a boiled egg. I think it's wrong. It's whatever. I don't. I, I can Joseph go introduced that. me to that. I for like the first a time. I like a good breakfast plate where everything's like mixed together. I like a little, little syrup in the eggs. Yeah. A little bit, you know, a great like country that. breakfast. Bunch of run. It's all running into each other yeah. and congealing. That's what I do in Thanksgiving. The too. grits and the eggs are making the eggs soft. There's juice running. Oh, it's fantastic. What's uh, do you like instant grits? Uh, you can't say I ever had them. Yeah. I, do you I, like grits? <laughs> I used to be very much against grits, but that's because like uh, the, the first time I ever had grits was at my school cafeteria when oh, I was like bad in third start. grade. Bad start. You could pick the grits up like a frisbee a and throw rock. them. A rock. It was a single you could object. Bludgeon someone to death. Might Blunt as well just been trauma. called. Might as well just been called grit. It was just one solid object. Blunt force grits. But uh, I had a like revelation, like a revelatory experience About when I got grits. shrimp and grits. Uh, oh, one time, and it was. I'm not a shrimpman. Oh, I'm man. not opposed. Shrimp and I grits, told you that last night. Shrimp and grits with like a wine, like a sherry wine sauce or something, was incredible. Nice. So I've been turned on to grits lately. Of all the things that I've like gotten over from being a picky eater as a child, seafood is still one that like I'll do it. 
But you wouldn't seek it out. But I'm never very happy about it. There's a slight amount of like I'm having to kind of like squeeze my well, fist. What about the shrimp uh, that was in my ramen dish last night? You wouldn't. It go looked that? good. Oh, and I said it looked good, but I wouldn't buy it. I'd eat it if someone said this is all you're getting. <laughs> you're like at a like prison you, where they serve you seafood. You the- Whoa, <laughs> it's my job. But um, speaking of seafood, the lighthouse. The lighthouse looks good. Um, I don't know. We're like. We're just going all over the place right well, now. Well, it's a freeform podcast. It always has been. But I think... I Listen to me. I think I made an interesting comment last night. My favorite tweet that I've ever done. That was you earlier. Oh, You're just so self-absorbed. Up. I can't stand it shut sometimes. Shut up! Go on. Matthew McConaughey had his renaissance where he was like no longer disgusting. Right. And... Oh, yeah. Check out Mud. No. Um, mud too. Who else did I mention I came around on? Adam Driver. Right. After Girls... I saw him in Force Awakens. I, I went a long time with that. And he's that. like, he's good. And I'm okay with him now. It's like, it's like a member of a boy band that like would suddenly do like a amazing rock album sure. or metal project. I'm like, okay. Maybe, okay. You're, maybe you're an okay guy. Uh, but yeah. And that's Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. Because yeah. he was in Twilight. And you know, if you go back, I mentioned, you know, he shits all the movies. Yeah, right. That's a great thing. He got rich. I don't I, like I, I not even that it. long after like as soon as he was done filming those movies he went on some late night show and someone asked him how he felt about it and he's like hey, he just joked he was just like it's a little bittersweet and then he kind of looked at the camera and went for them reminds it me of the, like, hilarious sorry like, to, I was like I respect this man. sorry to stain the podcast with this even but it's like the Game of Thrones actors from season eight you know oh, all talking about so, how shitty it yeah. was best ending ever oh. you know from what's her name yeah I like yeah <laughs> Amelia Clark thank you I like when Peter Dinklage was just like, I think David Benioff and D.B. Wise are two of the most talented writers. You, you, could, just like, you could feel the invisible gun to his head. Mm, like the HBO execs just Oof. cocking and loading, baby. <laughs> Isn't that the new album from the Struts? <laughs> um, but yeah, The Lighthouse looks pretty fucking good. Yes. And uh, I mean, need for, for some more subtle like HP Lovecraftian stuff. Yeah. And that's that looks like it could there's be. Thing I made. There's there's an octopus tentacle in there. I somewhere. made a bad comment about. Do you think so? Really? There there is. Last night I was like, is it? And I was like, I knew there was a tentacle backpedaling. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that could be entitled. Whoops! To, I knew there was a tentacle. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't. It's also a problem of I don't know what that could be. Right. I really don't. And we may not know after. I hope it's that. I'm I I'm gonna see that. Choose in your own adventure. I'm gonna see that in theaters. I hope it gets a big, re- like a somewhat wide release. Yeah, if it's like a festival type movie. I, I, yeah, back in my but like I said, town. at least it's an American made movie, so it'll be distributed. True, true. Like there's some movies I've tried to watch, where I, just, I can't find this. I, it's just nowhere. Yeah. Um. Well, I guess that's a thing to talk about because this is like catch up. What have we done? We're sure. media boys, mass media men. Um, what movies have you seen? Since we last met. God, I don't even know where to start with that. I don't watch movies like I used to. I wanted to be, you know, everybody goes through the film buffets where it's like, I'm, this is good for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be a, like a man that's like a movie guy. Um. Yeah, I, I know the feeling. I'm trying to think of what I've seen. Um. I don't seek movies out anymore, hardly ever, like I used to. Same with music and stuff. Um. I mean, the big one I've seen that's somewhat notable is that Jonah Hill movie, mid-90s, which I enjoyed quite a bit. I don't even know if I've heard of that. Yeah, I told you about it. Well, I'm sorry. Well, I shouldn't say that. Were we drinking? I don't know. Probably. Well, but yeah, I enjoyed that. I was. Did Jonah Hill have a come around like Adam Driver and Robert Pattinson he's a, and Matthew McConaughey? He Terrific has a actor. He has a really good style for like in terms of directing. I was impressed. Like that's his directorial debut, and I really enjoyed it. I like him when he plays someone in over his head, and like, like, like he's what? always on the defensive. That's a good movie for that. I'm a get him to the Greek apologist. I have never seen that. I like I, that. I movie enjoy a super lot. bad. I accept super bad. Yeah. Except for that one kid, McLovin. Who, oh, who was that actor? Mince Plas. Yeah, I don't. Plus I, I don't. The rest of the movie, I'll be like, okay, this is this is fine. Yeah. That guy, when he comes on screen, I'm ready to punch. Wow. I'm ready to strike, get my brass knuckles, and just leave a gummy paste. I mean, that's what he'll be. Damn, it got dark. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, uh, mid nineties was mid nineties was good. Uh, I don't know if it would be something you like. It was about like growing up in 
LA in the nine, mid nineties and being like part of skateboard and rebellious culture. I don't know. You might find something. Go to that there. YouTube comment section, man. Get ready for the nineties, kids. Yeah, well, get ready. They're pulling up in their. I'll show you the trailer. Nineties cars. Yeah, they're cool nineties. My what's, Acura NSX. What's like the? I was about to say, what's the quintessential nineties like Civic? Something like that. See, I'm just, you're speaking another language. Not, I just know nothing. I'm not about a car cars. guy. Everyone's a car guy. They're like so. Like, how do people know so many things about cars? Daniel's a huge car guy. Almost everyone I meet just knows so much about cars. Yeah. Or is it just that I know so impossibly little because I don't care? Yeah, it might be that. You know, I mean, I know cars, but I just I don't like car culture is beyond me. I don't get it. Yeah. Okay, let me trade a blow. What movie have I seen? Oh, what? <laughs> this is sad. What is that? That movie I saw. That uh, Jesus. <laughs> this is great content. <laughs> I watched a movie about a record store. Oh, oh, I can't think of what it's and called. And it's got that dude with the fucked up teeth that was like a heartthrob. It's from like the '90s, and it has Jack Black in it as like a screaming guy. But it's all about like music buffs. And record stores and being really pretentious. What's it's about? Like, it, what's a vinyl term? This is bad. Uh-huh. I don't know. This is bad. Let's look it up. Let's find it. There's a line in it that's really famous. Where um, I'm googling record store Jack Black. Someone goes, um, "That's a great fucking record." Hold on, let me do that. Is all- John Cusack in it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. High, high fidelity. High fidelity. I saw that fucking movie. How was that? I had a great time with it. Yeah. For the first. 45 minutes i was just like this is so funny because you don't see a lot of things that are sort of like super obsessive music people sure yeah and it had kind of a clerk's vibe that didn't offend me you know dudes hanging around in a store and just talking about like fucking bell and sebastian and like uh like i'm not saying they're obscure but obscure records and the stereotypes of like the different fan of the different genre. And it just was, it was really good until it, it turns into, it's a romance movie. Oh, and it's in a weird structure because it's like, you know how people who are always, we, we've done this. People who are always like my top 10, my top five, yeah. it's in the structure of somebody who would do that with like my top five favorite movies or records, except it's presented my first fucked up relationship and how that ended. So as the movie is going along, like present it's interlacing with how he fucked up like all of his all of the women he was like involved with and it started off so well and it just crashed and burned and was it, it was like way too long and it got really bad what what happened is that guy probably the director had an idea for a movie like and it was that good. and he couldn't figure out how to end it so he had to sh- like shoestring some shit together they and- just nailed the stereotypes of the music buff and like the different genre enthusiasts like yeah. the metal and the punk and the indie rock and it was great it was great for that but then it just fell off and i got so bored I and upset i heard something about that recently but it's, it's old, well regarded right? it's but it's old right it's like, like mid '90s, early '90s. Well, I mean, like it's not recent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I, I saw something about that and thought about watching that. I don't know what it was, but yeah, don't watch. I've it. heard of it. No, don't don't watch it. <laughs> I backtracked to find that movie because I was listening to Office Hours with Tim Heidecker, and they constantly have a drop of John Cusack saying, "That's a great fucking record." Uh-oh. And I was like, "I got to figure out what movie that's from." Then I watched it with Ariel, and she liked it a lot more because. She was in. She, you know, she's like romance stuff a lot more than me, so she enjoyed it. Except we both agreed it was way too long. Ah. Um. Okay. Go, go back to you. What? What's a movie? What's a mo- What's a I, movie? Well, where do I start? <laughs> um. I I can't think of any like notable ones I've seen outside of that. Really, I haven't been watching a lot of movies. Can you one up me with a weaker like review of a movie that I just gave? I can't even remember the fucking title. <laughs> like, let's let's figure this out. Make people listen. Man, you know, I've, I've been looking at uh, Lonesome Dove over there on my shelf. I still haven't cracked that open. That was my I, that was I've my Christmas scared. gift from you. I, like, I don't know I've if been I scared. It. I don't want to break your heart. Uh, yeah, I didn't know, like, because <laughs> I saw it so long ago. I didn't know if it was actually total shit. And I just remembered it fondly yeah. from being a younger person and my parents fawning over it. It's I have it. It's there. People hold, Some people hold it in high regard, but I'd wonder if it's one of those things where it's just like nobody's watched it since the 80s. That's uh, Space Jam. That movie's oh. terrible. 
That movie is bad. That, that movie is not good, and everyone it's loves it. It's just people's it. memories. Everyone they were, loves it. They were dumb kids. I watched that movie maybe in 2014 or 15 again with like some people. Like Ooh. just We just kind of threw it on. I, I knew it was not good at the time, but to watch them realize this movie's not good was really well, like... It's kind of sad. The funniest thing about it is a lot of people couldn't get their... When I was in college, liked it, and they couldn't get their hands on it for some reason, even though it wouldn't be that hard. Yeah. But... They had merchandise, but oh, yeah. they hadn't seen the movie since they were like a kid. Yeah, it's... but they had like a poster or they had like a shirt. And I'm just, have you watched this? And I was like, I- I'm gonna watch it again soon. Like, I, I, one of my friends has the has the DVD. Yeah, like, but you you own this shirt. I think it was like Rocco Bodhi bought it on Blu-ray, and he's like, I watched this movie, and this movie sucks. Yeah. It's not good. And I was just like, really? I thought I thought everyone loved that movie. And I watched it, and I was like, this movie's bad. This movie is really not good. Me and Joseph rewatched it after the longest time he hadn't seen it in college. And like, I felt bad for him, because like, I could see yeah. the disappointment. You know, I think I've gone on the record to say this on the podcast before, but you know what that is in video games? Mario Kart Double Dash. Oh. That, that game is not good. I've been fortunate and to have every, very fleeting interactions everyone with it. If you ask someone what's their favorite Mario Kart game, a lot of people will say Double Dash, but they haven't played it well, in a long time. A lot it's of people enjoy that first one. That game is horrible. 64, or the SNES one. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. It's so bad. 64 one's not good either. I like this. I think that's just my nostalgia. Mario Kart. I played the hell out of that game. 7 on the 3DS was good. 8's great. You, you had a 3DS? I did for a while. <sighs> I, I've admitted by one, but I don't know. I'll make a 4DS soon. You can smell oh, things. Whoa, smell There's Link. scratch and sniff thing. Ugh. You can smell Link's cool stockings. I wonder what Mario's, linens. Mario's mustache. That's Mimi. Um, okay, so you rewatch Space... No. No. I don't know. I don't, know. I, I, I don't have a lot of movie talk, really. I I'm just watched... excited for The Lighthouse. <laughs> and The Witch. We need to watch The Witch. Because it's by the same director. Yeah, yeah. And Robert Eggers. I've seen it, and it rules. It's really good. Um, Avengers Endgame. I have seen Avengers Endgame. That's one of the four Marvel movies I've seen. I've seen Iron Man 1 and 3. Uh, Iron Man 1's good. I, I don't I, remember. It's I've good. Seen, I've seen Iron Man 1, Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3's bad. Yeah, it was terrible. saw that in theaters, man. I've seen... Uh, Iron Man 2's bad. Oh, I saw Galax- Guardi- Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, Galaxy Guardians. If you can get over the chuckle stuff and the music abuse... It's fine. It's a movie. Um... And then I've seen Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. That's it. So, I don't, well, quite the mu- There's not much to say. No. Everybody said plenty of stuff. But, you know, Infinity War was really good. I was more entertained so by Infinity War. Great production. Yeah. And Endgame, they did fine. Yeah, they wrapped it up. It, it, yeah, like I wouldn't walk away like... Put a neat little bow on it. This sucks. This is just a disaster, but... It, Which it could have been. I mean, there were a few... I was surprised you were... You felt anything about uh, the uh, stuff they did with um, Captain America? Yeah, it was a nice touch and seemed like a, a mature, like, into a storyline. It story was line, tasteful. So. Yeah, exactly. I think I'd use that exact and word. The thing I really liked about it in the CGI aged yeah. um, Chris Evans. They used face app. <laughs> I, <laughs> man, that's so weird. That shit, was that... Since we spoke last, where that shit blew up after we were into it before hipster statement. <laughs> Man, we uh we were using that in like 2015. There was a weird blow up. Yeah, with the old one, the old. Yeah, old and then everybody like, was like, "Russia's tracking us." Yeah, yeah. And that was a. Was that in the time since we last did a podcast? No, no, no. That was pretty recent. Damn, that was like the summer. We, damn. I don't want to get into that. But um, funniest thing about the Captain America thing is, like, a lot of people are very taken with that ending, and I liked it too. But well, see, the thing is, I have no real connection connection to Captain America or any of those characters. But even I could be like, "Well, that was a they did that well." The only that was I, effective. I just I, he sold it with the. Well, do you, you want to tell me about it? It was like a, and he's like, "I don't think I will." And he's just like smiling, and you can tell he's like really content. It was like a classy ending. Just, I don't think I will. <laughs> just like, yeah, that's that was somehow good. Yeah, I don't know why, good. but like it was whimsical. That was, that was the best part of the movie. I and thought. the fade out with him and the girl. But the only thing, the only problem is like, th- there's a lot of like question of like, so did he go back and not become Captain America? Did he not do stuff with the Avengers? Did he just meet the girl? I don't know. I, I don't want to get into these endless YouTube theories. Yeah. Time traveling gets messy. It was fine. Yeah, that's about it. That's about Tony how Stark. Um, 
Boohoo. It's the last one in the series, so who cares? You don't get to see the. Yeah, they don't keep it. stumbling along. I wonder when they're going to oh, reboot it. Oh, for sure, yeah. I wonder when they're going to reboot these characters. Will it be in the next 10 years? I don't know. God, they've rebooted the Joker like 10 times in the last oh, year. Oh, yeah, so. I guess I'll watch the Joaquin Phoenix Joker. I like Joaquin Phoenix. I you guess I'll watch it. it. I'll watch it. I don't Bring care, in though. the clown. You seem so crestfallen. No, I just, I don't, I don't know. Being a big Batman You're fan. You're the crestfallen knight of big, uh, this world. Ugh, being a big Batman fan when I was a kid. You're you Batman. It's part of growing up, kids. You know, you see stuff you used to love get blown up and dumb and I don't know. I don't want to talk about Batman. It makes me sad. That's fine. But uh, I do, go watch Return of the Joker. I think that's underrated. Um, and play the video game. No, don't do that. <laughs> I'll play Superman 64. Um, what else did I see? Okay. I I just I guess it's sad that I just watch blockbusters now. I used to be like the indie guy. And oh, I'm cool. watching art films. I'm a hipster, and I like the 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 arty. Have you seen this Criterion Collection? Uh, oh man, we were just browsing uh, some of those fifty dollar Jumanji from Criterion. <laughs> Rob- <laughs> <laughs> Not the Robin Williams one, but the, the one with the one. Rock and Jack the rock. Black. Criterion, Criterion Collection like presents a, book, a booklet inside. <laughs> Jack Black's like diary. You know, you know how there's like uh, in some video games, there's like a. How do you say the word? Bestiary or bestiary or whatever? A Hyrule Compendium? Yeah, it's like it? a compendium. <laughs> it's like, it has just like a Jumanji compendium of all oh. the bo- monsters and stuff. Oh. Um, but I guess I just watched a lot of blockbusters lately. I saw it chapter two. Uh, I've heard not so good things. This, okay, so it, the, the, the funny thing about it is like, you know, it's a typical, both of them are typical horror movies with jump scares and that's CGI why, monsters. Um, I, don't but, wanna, I don't wanna see jump scares. But I don't, it's not that's why I hate these two movies, because there is good stuff in it. Right, and they cheapen there, it. There are two people, it's like there's two personalities in these movies. Because, you know, usually in a jump scare movie, it's completely forgettable characters, and there's like no sense of like scope. Or like a self-contained universe, or a mystery that's actually compelling, or like a musical score that's you walk away with, and it's like kind of haunting, but also like whimsical and good. But the, the, the it piano main theme is good for the new for the 2017 movie. It's great. But, like, I don't know, one of the Stranger Things kids, Finn Wolf Horror, something's in there. And, I don't know, the the, the kids were really good. And, um, but then it would be undercut by, like, a lot of stupid. It's not the worst jump scares or, like, the worst overblown CGI monsters, but it's it's there. It cheapens it. But some of the scenes are good. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Okay, for, like, every, every good scary clown scene there's like five too much cgi like twitching shit but the ones that are really good are awesome like they're really good um and the first one i would say is like a good i thought about watching the first one. it's a good rental like sitting around at night i don't know if you just go into it and don't expect a lot which i think that's what a lot of people did when that um, came out i don't know why people hold this reverence for it well that the Pennywise the clown thing is its own thing. It's an icon. Tim Curry was good. That's ex- in the TV that's series. what it is. It, but it the precedes, rest of it, is it precedes the movies garbage. and the series. Yeah, and the book's not good. I haven't read all of it, but my dad has this whole hard copy, hardback copy of it. I thumbed through a lot of it, but and read even more about it and gathered multiple opinions that are not mine. That movie's a fucking, as a lot of people call it, a cocaine fueled nightmare. Wait, That's which one? It. The original book from Stephen King. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a fucking mess. It's all over the place, and it's not good. But so many people look back at it. I don't know if because there's been all these layers and all these adaptations, there's even like an Indian like TV series you go. made by people Sorry. <laughs> made by people who didn't read or see the TV series. Very strange. 
But I think people just, for some reason, think because there's so much of it, oh, the book's like this cinematic, like, classic. It's it's not. Even Stephen King is like, That's, that book's not very good. It was an idea, though, that But grew. he had a million good ideas, but exactly. it's just a clusterfuck of, like, weird shit. And there's, there's a, this is one of the craziest things about the original, like, the book. There's a gang bang situation. I think I've heard that. With the underage Beverly Marsh character. Ugh. And there's something about when they're all down in the sewer as kids trying to, like, kill the clown. They have to, like, lose their virginity to overcome the clown or something because their innocence has to be lost because he feeds upon that. And so they all take turns having sex with her. Oh, yeah. All these underage, like, 13 and 14-year-old kids. And it apparently goes into pretty graphic detail and explains, like, how their genitalia felt in her from her perspective. No. And mm-hmm. you just know at that point that Stephen King was really high. I mean, it's known he had, like, a serious drinking and cocaine problem. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, wow, sex pervert Stephen King. Sex pervert. What is that? <laughs> That's like drug pipe. Exactly what I thought. mentioned in the last That's exactly podcast. exactly what I thought. Um, but then, I don't know, that. The sequel, fucking wrap up this it talk, fucking blockbuster barf bag movies. Um, it was like one fourth as good as the fine first one. Yeah. Fi- first one's fine. I also heard it was really long. Is that? Yeah, it was three hours long. Fuck that. Is he, I'm never going to see well, that. Well, the, the, the problem about it, in, like the first one has, it has a structure to it for the most part. Like there's a lot of character building. And development and of course there's okay spooky clown scene we're gonna interrupt it periodically with this but like the the second one starts out really strong and like it establishes like i think even people who don't give a shit or know anything about the story know how they know what it is and like the kids come back as adults you're right and it's like 27 years later because that's when the clown comes back every 27 years that's the only cool thing about it there, there's a mythos to it and he's like an eldritch being spoilers that's kind of, yeah. he's from space and uh, like ori- see now, uh, he originated in a void that's the thing about it it's there's cool. great ideas yeah. but it like it it doesn't stick the landing anywhere it's like Stephen King had these great ideas and then it was just like how do I how do I make a book out of this and like there's a macro verse in Stephen King's novels, and a lot of them are connected. Uh, yeah, yeah. And like in some of his other, something about The Shining, right? Tommy Knockers has like a like a character goes to Derry, Maine, where it takes place, and he sees a clown that is Pennywise. Mm, okay, but like, it's a passing thing. And then like in a time travel one, the one that Stephen King wrote about John F. Kennedy. Like, someone's trying to, like... It's like a date... The date that Kennedy died is the name of the book. Yeah. Someone's trying to, like, save Kennedy and go back in time. They, like, go back in time to when the the kids are in Derry, Maine, and they're talking about a murder. They're like, oh, yeah, that one wasn't the clown. There's, like, he does these weird little, like... Subtle nods. Yeah. Yeah. But apparently in his mythos, there's, like, creators of the universe, and there's, like, a giant space turtle. Uh, the think the I've heard mature of that, yeah. the Matterin or something, and it it and whatever well Pennywise it and the turtle were like the two beings that existed as yin and yang. I like the thought of that. And a clown and a the, fucking the turtle. giant space turtle. Well, the clown is just its favorite manifestation, but apparently, like oh. it has no true form. It's like something referred. See, this I like the ideas yeah. a lot. So it's, it preys on the kids' worst fears. But is its what it true is, form right? is not like. Was it corporeal? Yeah. It's it's something called deadlights, where it's just like something in another dimension that we can't see or understand. And when you look at it in a very Lovecraftian way, you're you go, selling me on this shitty project, product here. You go insane. And there's a few times where you see the deadlights. Yeah. And like, it's very Lovecraft. Like, people lose their mind and like start floating and going like comatose. Um, but it's so weird. Like, the fucking clown, it. it I don't know. This is just... I like talking about it. <laughs> the clown... The reason it's a clown, it, it likes that form. Okay. It just likes it. I thought it might like adapt to the no, children's worst fears. Kind of, what was it? Like well, Dante's Inferno? Well, what it Inferno? does is it does do that. It does do that, but ultimately it like, reverts back to clown form as like the base of operations. And it's such a mess. But it does go after the kids' worst fears. And the reason it goes after kids is because their, their, their emotions are easier to manipulate. And... 
as it refers to it said God, it's so sorry. it the character pennywise says that it's like salting the meat <laughs> when you scare them it feeds on the fear and it makes them better and it has to eat the children every 27 years and it's all these disappearances like hundreds of people every 27 years for billions of years because it's apparently billions of years old i don't know like that's good stuff but the rest of it is just a disaster and they can i spoil maybe? i don't care yeah this omnipotent, like, interdimensional, like, extraterrestrial thing can be, can, like, when it manifests itself, there's, like, a set of rules of its physicality. It's so confusing. It has to look like Bill Skarsgård. Is no, that well, one of them? Like, and, and it has the, to look like Bill Maher. The, it can do all these things. It can turn into a giant spider and, like, spear you through the chest, but you can kill it by insulting it. Okay. And that's the ending. It's like a War of the Worlds, how the birds just shit on them and they die. Remember like that? Oh, yeah. God. Because they're like, their immune systems weren't <laughs> up to snuff. They didn't drink enough kombucha. What a parallel. But yeah, literally in, in the end, like, after it's like this giant god monster can like live forever for billions of years they start calling it a clown and chanting around it and it backs away and starts shrinking and they rip its heart out. Oh. Except it also, why would it have a heart? Because it's lights. So it's just a, yeah. it's interesting. It's like, it, just look into it. So I don't know, I'm done. But it was like the movie, the second movie was not, it, it was pretty, it wasn't bad. It was just, there's no structure and like, there's like a, we got to split up in the middle of the movie. And it's like, okay, they're all going to see the clown and be alone. It's going to do this for an hour and a half. You can but see it coming. The strength of the characters is when they're together. Yeah. But they, as soon as they split up, because they have to go find an artifact, because there's a ritual. These, like, Native Americans almost destroyed this it. This is insane. It's sprawling! Stephen King has so many ideas, but he's a psycho. Yeah. Um, That's like I said, you're selling me on it. There's a ritual like... of chewed that they, these Native Americans figured out, where there's, like, this urn that all the people who are being stalked by the clown have to have, like, an artifact from their childhood and they throw it in the urn and do this ritual where they start chanting in a circle, and it should kill the clown. It's a uh, it's it, it's Rainfall's Chinupa from and, Red Dead. And, and, <laughs> Remember that? I'm gonna get into Red. Dead. Okay, I thought that was. There's a lot of our, like sequels. I thought that could have been a good pivot. There's a lot of sequels <laughs> and twos I'm gonna talk about in this. Okay, but is it just called It Two? It Chapter Two. It Fair colon that's, Chapter Two. That's a little two. classier than just It Two. With a is it, it Roman the numerals? No. Well, it could be in some, but no, it's mainly, it's mainly just it, too. Um, but yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it, but you just got to go into it like, this isn't going to be good, and you'll like it, probably. Bill Hader was good. Bill Hader was pretty good. Do you know who Bill Hader is yeah. from SNL? Yeah. He um, has been getting a lot of accolades. And I mean, Jessica he, Chastain was good. That, uh, oh, I like her. She was good. Uh, he's in that show Barry on HBO. Have you seen that? I've heard a lot of good He's stuff. like the, the, the main character, but... Uh, yeah, I've heard a lot of good stuff too, but I haven't checked it out yet. It, he was good. He was one of the best parts. Wow, well, interesting. Uh, I right. don't have an opinion of him, so I don't know, just watch the shit when it's on Netflix or something like that. If you're he bored. was one of the cops in Superbad, wasn't he? I think so. I don't know. I've seen Superbad in like ten years. Yeah, it's uh, well, a lot of people watch. made me want to like wanted to watch it with me. <laughs> like, watch Superbad, and of course, I'm just a prick, and the buzz comes like. Oh, fuck that. Well, it came out when I was like twelve or thirteen, so it was like the perfect like. Oh, our parents don't know about this, and it's about partying and sex and <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it's about butts. But <laughs> my favorite, my favorite hip hop subject, butts. Well, it's a thing. Um, butts, guns, and running these streets. <laughs> Um, just running but yeah let's get into two talk lots of two okay. we're going from it chapter two I am so scared Red Dead Redemption 2 oh man I'm so scared I don't it's know what to do it's been almost a year since it came there's out there's so much I had so many thoughts and then I didn't and then it like I feel numb and it took me so long to beat it and I was going through a horrible, horrible, the worst. You know, I replayed it again recently, right? Yeah. Yeah, I beat it like over the summer. I again. went through the worst alcoholic phase of my life playing this game. Because of the game? or No, something? just <laughs> I happened to be finally yeah. wrapping up. And I played a lot of that game like almost blackout drunk. So I, I owe it a replay. Huh? Did Daniel beat it? Yeah. Okay, so I can talk about big spoilers. And this is, 
Okay. Oh, I don't know where to start with this. There's it, bombshell stuff, Chris, was coming up. All right. You're going to be really disappointed with me in a few ways. Okay. So, I have a notepad document. Oh, good. Of course. I, I slowly was jotting down my thoughts as I played it. Because I knew a game that's sprawling and massive, there's no way I can just play it and then start, okay, what did I think? I mostly wrote down the things that I reacted to, like the the, the strongest. The, oh, I know what I'm going to be disappointed with you. You did the bad karma thing. <sighs> yeah, but there's it's worse. There's worse things. You there's put like, pomade in his hair. No, no. I did that too. I like the slick Arthur, but there's slick slick Arthur. Slick Arthur. <laughs> there you go. Um, it's going to be like a Daniel level of disappointment, except like it could have been helped. You know, like he fucked up the Mexico horse thing. He did. No, it what wasn't. Did, what Mexico. happened again it, for it, the podcast refresh? It was just after you, uh, Dutch kills himself in the first game. In a weird way, too. And you get a uh, weird suicide. You get the like a song that comes on when you ride back home to your family. Oh, yeah. And so like a it's like a powerful moment near the end of the game. And he like he was like, OK, mission's over and like shot the horse. And the song just like cut out <laughs> and just totally undercut everything that had like been built up and was being released at the time but it was very daniel-esque he breaks games unlike anyone else i've ever seen it's impressive. also like what's his name ray can i name drop you were talking about oh yeah that guy Friend too ray. just bad things happening to him in yeah. games well the funny thing about daniel also is when he turned on red dead you know how there's a uh, all the all the cutscenes of the game are in game yeah so, like, the opening cutscene, Arthur was, like, falling off of his horse and just wasn't in the cutscenes or something like that. He recorded it. I was just like, man, you, you didn't even touch the controller and it's broken already. It's impressive. Some of these... Man's th- got a talent. Yeah. Yeah. A curse. No. A no, gift. it's a talent. A gift. A gift. It's got the gift of gab. A lot of these are... I just put them in here and didn't curate them. And I, some of them I wrote drunk and there's some misspelled stuff. And it's not in a good order. And for some we okay, some reason, some reason I okay, so the first thing that pissed me off, there was I, I doled out my thoughts to you in in some ways. Oh sure, I gave you some of the generic bitches and gripes about that game. Like it's too easy to fail missions. You're like following somebody and you don't know how to operate the horse because you're drinking, <laughs> and you walk off the path for three feet. Mission failed. That's a generic gripe. Yeah. A few times I was, there was a little bit of that in the first one. Oh yeah, for sure. And I did not feel as irritated as in the first one. In the second one, it got to me. I, 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 I don't know. It just felt like the game was too constricting about how it wanted me to play it. I get it. But I didn't feel that with, I know you don't want me to compare, but GTA five, like I know it, you could easily fail some missions in that. I but can't stand that game. With me in Red Dead 2, I don't know if it was my own incompetence or just wanting to kind of break the mold and do a few things outside of the lines in the mission. It is pretty restrictive. But it felt oppressive But sometimes. see, to me, I was willing to play ball with it because I was just but having such a good time. But I, I totally I adapted. can see From the outside, it is very restrictive, and they want you to do these things a certain it way. It frustrated for sure. me for a while. But then I tempered my play style and was just like, okay, I get it wants me to do it exactly mm-hmm. like it should be done. I can't fuck the around. Whole game, the whole game style is very deliberate and slow paced. And it wasn't like I was trying to like shoot story mission characters no, or anything yeah. during like talking scenes. But like I would just fuck up or just venture off or like f- try to do something. Right. I thought would be cool. And just, no. <laughs> and so that Jim sucked. Jim Baker's voice came in and went, stop it. Oh, Jim. And so that's one of my silly drunken notes. Too easy fail missions. <laughs> yeah. Um, I should have put more thoughts down from the beginning, but I kind of started putting my thoughts down heavily during the Gorma uh-huh. segment. What is that? Act three or four? That's four. Okay. So there's five main acts, right? I or think six? It might be five, actually. It's there's five. six. Okay. There's six in the... Is ep- six the... Who cares? And there's two epilogues. I really enjoy the epilogues. Really? But yeah. Even the uh, building the house scene. Yes. I thought it was I great. It was, that song, it's man. cheesy as hell, but I like it. I know. I thought it was good. A I, Willie Nelson song in it, too. With Snoop Dogg. With the way it ended in the main story for me, I needed some laughs. Sure, yeah. And Uncle was... it was. I like Uncle. Um, 
Uh, I John John's a great. So character. I wrote this down. Arthur is a great. Character. Guarma walking simulator. Semicolon. I just put my controller down flat, upside down for a long time, so the analog stick would just keep me moving. That lasts like thirty seconds. It felt like I know five you're about. minutes. I yeah, when put you, when you my controller. If down. you were watching the cutscene for anyone who hasn't played the game and is listening for some reason, if you, <laughs> like you put the controller down for a cutscene and it kind of pan, the camera pans back. And if you don't move, Arthur doesn't move. And then a little prompt will say, move. Yeah, you can push it in up. any direction. Yeah. So I just put it down and let it just... It's an uh, interactive, quote-unquote, in the I was very frustrated by that. I, I just, in my head... Yeah, it was just was like, like, why? What? I mean, I think there was supposed to be, like, a weighted kind of impact to it. Like, oh, you're... you're tromping through the sand you're yeah. pushing you're slow and you're feeling like the work he's having to do and the weight of it but i just it's like fuck this <laughs> it's pretty stupid and it was a walking simulator um i wrote down a line from the chain gang sequence in gorma i don't know who said it but they can't find out who we are in front of presumed non-English speaking soldiers during an escort who later respond to questions asked in English with full understanding. There was no hushed, like the characters are saying to each other, they can't find out. They're just like walking right behind these people. They can't find out who we are. And then they respond in English later. Yeah. And that made me angry. Um, are you just going through things that you didn't like? Are you going to say anything positive? Yeah, I'm just getting that over. Okay. I'm just wondering. Um, this was a weird... I don't know who does it. There's a... There's like an attack from... What are they? The Haitian um, pirates yeah, or basically. something during like the Baptiste escort. And the, the um, crew. And I think it's Dutch immediately shoots the soldier escort as soon as... Um, as soon as one of these Haitian pirates enters the scene and chaos ensues. And to me, I, I, I had to question my, like, why are you so eager to get on the bad side of the government of this Island? That seems oppressive. Why are you just so desperate instantly? Cause Dutch is like a talker. He's a manipulator. He gets oh, under he, the skin of these people. I'm not and, even, I'm not trying to justify it. I'm just saying he was a talker, right? Yeah. But, and I understand there's the argument that he was unraveling right. at this point after all of the events but he just as soon as the haitian started shooting and entered the scene he picks up a gun and just starts blasting all the soldiers i'm like i wouldn't do that because in my mind oh these fucking soldiers are going to overwhelm the haitians and then come back to me yeah but he just immediately and of course you do shoot all the soldiers and get away well it's like video game yeah <laughs> yeah but so i mean i don't know i'm over analyzing um this is a totally not this is like a wine. This is a J gripe. Yeah. My two favorite characters died early. Jose and Lenny. Oh, yeah? They died really early, in my opinion. About halfway through. And I... Those well, you were, had to know that the gang members were going to die based on... I know. Yeah. But I was just pissed that it didn't... That like Especially Jose didn't make it for, like closer to the end. Yeah. Jose was... Jose was a great I character. I loved Jose. And Lenny was amazing, too. But Jose was like... My favorite in the game. And it was just so quick and over with. And I just. That's not like. That's just me. Like I don't want that. Did you do the. I don't think you did. Because of your honor or whatever. But did mm -hmm. you do the uh, missions with. I think your name was Mary Beth. Arthur's like old lover. No. You, you missed. Uh, there's so correspondence much, and letters. That's it. Really? Yeah. There's a whole side story, basically. And, a lot uh, of the content is cut out if you don't do yeah. like the honorable There's some of the thing. like real tearjerker moments, man. Damn. You missed a lot. Uh, there's a great scene, if you have high honor, where you meet like a nun that you kind of did like some odd jobs for at a train station. And there's a really... I gotta just show you the scene. And like, it's like Oscar level acting from whoever did uh, Arthur's voice. It's so good. Like you can feel the pain and like Whoa. the realization that he's dying. And he says something like, I'm scared. And mm -hmm. just like... You can like see it looks so humid. I was so impressed by the acting in that game. It, no, it was fantastic. All the cinematic stuff was oh, and the story was very impressive. It's remarkable that video game um, like that. This is uh, another one. It's, well, it's a well directed game. What is this? I think this is after Guarma. After returning ashore, I was forced to run back from beyond Saint Denis, and my horse was just suddenly lost. Yeah, I remember that. I held a cab. 
and or a stagecoach. I just have jotted down here. This is dumb padding. Like, great. Now I have to fucking run forever, and I could just call my horse at any other point in the game. But now that where's the horse? Just oh well, your horse is lost, and it gives you a little message. Yeah, but you get it back. I know, but I needed it then. I was just like, I have to run. Yeah, but run don't, you, don't you think you would complain all if the your way. horse is just waiting for you at the beach? I should be able to call. And just whistle, okay, and the I horse comes up. Yeah. But no, it's just lost. You gotta run. I'm just like, to go all the way to fucking send it. No. Um, a lot of people gripe about the slowness. I liked it. Um, this is a, too much time is spent on men's faces. And women's faces... Um, oh, you particularly mean like, ancillary characters are yeah. still ill-defined by comparison. I think comparison. that's just a problem in video games. They cannot get women's faces right. But it's not even like they were bad. It's just there weren't a lot of close-ups. Sure. Who is the... Um, Sorry, it's been a long time since I played it. The, the, female, the strong female who you do a lot of missions with. Um, Sadie. Later the, Sadie. Sadie Adler. She was the only one that it was like okay they really put a lot into like which the motion is kind of capture. funny because she's basically a man character but so. all the other female characters it was just like or male stereotype like, character is what i mean like just it's like the first game oh the first game women look terrible yeah and so i was just like can we not pay more attention in detail to these female characters because the men are like so hyper realistic and all these close ups and like potholes and the yeah. women are just like kind of in the corner or like in world and not in the cinematics. Um, I'm get I'm gonna get to complimentary stuff. Okay. I just had to get this over with. Um, why can't I ride my horse through camp? <laughs> Everyone yells at you. Like I'm just stopped. I can't do it. Um, okay. So getting to positive stuff, finally, finally. Um, I think the first moment in that game where I was freakishly moved, or just like, this impacts me the same way the first game did, right. where it's like progressing it, was picking herbs with Rain's Fall. I love that mission. That might be my favorite mission in the game, where you're talking about your son and stuff. That was so good, and it's at the point that you know you're like terminally ill. Yep. And he's trying to help. I, it's just that I love overtones of good. like Native American mysticism. Yeah, too. it's so the, interesting. Well, it's the best like parts of Longmire, even though that shows. Well, mess. it's also remember when we talked about Cowboy Bebop? The like the oh, first yes. half of the se- the series ends, and there's like wise Native mm-hmm. American quote unquote. You know what I'm getting at? But mm-hmm. like, it's just such a weird mystic, like cosmic. I don't know. I don't know how to describe kind it. Of a Western, I, you know. I love it. Funny, <laughs> love it. Um. I cried for the first time as Eagle Flies was returned to Rain's Fall shot. First time. Wait. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. The stuff with Rain... Um, I really enjoyed um, Rain's Fall. Like, he was He's great. Fucking awesome character. And when he gets to that little uh, shrine and it's like burnt by the soldiers... The Chinupa. The Chinupa. That fucked me up and his reaction to that because he's such a positive character. You could hear like the shaking in his voice. And he's disillusioned and negative. I was upset. Yeah. And I don't know. His his conflict with his son, Eagle Flies, Mm -hmm. was very upsetting in like an emotional stirring way for me. Yeah. And I felt a lot of stuff with that for the first time in the game i mean there was stuff i was like oh that's sad or that's moving or i like this small story but this was it was like okay this is hitting me well let me piggyback off of that subject i the waterworks got going for me at the, like the very end of the game when like arthur succumbs to his illness or mm-hmm. whatever i think you got shot by micah but like so i didn't know there were separate endings and so i was like in the back of my mind i was like oh we're playing as john now what if like Somewhere along the line, there's a mission where you go to like a farm or something, and Arthur's just there mm. working on it. <laughs> then I slowly realized, like, that's not going to happen. Mm. I was like, oh, this is so hard to do. Yeah. I wanted that so badly. John, like, delivers goods to a farm, and Arthur's there. That would just be Just working on it, like, under witness protection that would be almost. so cool. I wanted that so badly, but of course it didn't happen. I Arthur dies. I know it goes without saying, but... Arthur's character is so ridiculously good. Arthur is my favorite video game character. Period. I don't know if I would say that, but I can't think of one possibly that's more fleshed out. He's fleshed fun, out yeah. and multidimensional. And I really—that's why you have to. I was play about to say, I regret it. I really 
regret. I don't know. I just started like I just kind of did like through the first half of the game. I didn't go out of my way to do positive things. Right. I didn't do horrible. I wasn't like running through the town, shooting everybody up, but I didn't like help people often. Right. I didn't jump at every opportunity when I was hailed on the side of the road to, you know, do the well, side there mission. Some side missions that are just good honor missions that give you a lot. So, so I didn't it's not time. like it's not like you just have to go out of your way to find someone to give yeah. five cents to. They're I, just missions you missed. I didn't also. Go, I didn't have time to just build a lot of it. Right. So I sat in the middle. I think the default is in the middle, right? If you don't do a lot yeah. of extra stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. So the fact that I still got like the bad ending because of that, I started toward maybe three fourths of the way through the game when I became aware. Did you go for the money at the end or did you help John? I helped John. Okay, that's interesting. There are multiple in There's not just two. So you might have gotten the neutral bad I helped kind of thing. John at that point. Um, there's like a very good ending, a neutral, and then there's like a bad one. Yeah, and three fourths of the way through the game, I started trying to go out of my way to do like the really nice stuff. Right. But by that point, it wasn't salvageable. And by the end, I was like, "Oh no, come on!" Like I'm not even like far over into the red so or whatever. There, there are a lot of reasons. Unforgiving. To, there are a lot of reasons to replay, it, especially for you. So one thing that I picked up on was it's fascinating to see how much reverence Arthur has for Dutch at the beginning, knowing what happens. Mm -hmm. It's so fascinating. Um, but yes. His eye opening and the evolution of it is great. Because you, cause you're kind of seeing it along with him the first time you play the game, but to know what happens is really interesting to watch. And for you specifically, the good honor missions are some of the most moving things. Like a lot of Rains Falls esque kind of like Ooh. heartwarming or kind of things like that. So it's definitely worth a replay for you. Um, yeah, Arthur's character was incredible. And I can only imagine if I did all of the honorable things how much better i would appreciate him yeah because i appreciate him so deeply <clears throat> at this point you know um the only only flaw i feel and it's just it had to happen this way video game and you know it has to get from point a to b as it but as he started to question dutch Mm -hmm. And he kept going with them. it. Kept going for too long yeah. to the point that it was like, okay, man. Like, yeah, you're like the, dumb. The split where they have like the conflict within the camp should have happened. Yeah. Did you? I bet you didn't get this. I don't know if it's optional or not. Did you get the part where he tells uh, Strauss to just leave? The Austrian. I mean, lender. I know who Strauss is, but I don't remember. Honestly, I think you probably have to have good honor. That there's, sounds familiar. But there's a scene where he just like. No, you didn't do it. I know you didn't do it because there's a an optional series of missions where you're supposed to collect debts near the end. And you just, you go to these uh, houses and people can't, don't have the money. He's like, uh, you know what? Just forget it. Just things like that. And, or he'll pay it. Oh. And he stomps, he's like storms back to the camp. He's like, Strauss, get up, leave, pack your bags. You're going. Strauss is good. And it, it's it. really impactful because Strauss is so like lost and scared. He's like, oh, what did I do? But, like, Strauss was the whole reason Art, Art, Arthur ended up with tuberculosis in the first place, indirectly, yeah. but who, he destroyed his world. Who was that kind of, like, slick dude? Trelawney. Who drifted back and forth with the gang. Trelawney. I yeah. liked their um, final thing. And he, I think he, he, he at first is kind of trying to tell Arthur that he's not really leaving. Yeah. But then Arthur's just like, we both know yeah. like, what's going here. And they, you, they, they have this quiet acceptance of that. That's yeah. really good. I have to show you at least one thing that you missed. I know you're going to replay it at some point, maybe. At some oh, point, yeah. you'll get to it. But I got to show you a couple things to really uh, stoke the flames here. But I, I became less disgusted not disgusted less irritated with a lot of the elements of the game as it went on as i got more engrossed in the story and felt the i'm going back to see chris i gotta really wind this up i i got into it but the first half of the game in particular i probably didn't give enough attention or focus and took too many long breaks because i kind of as mega 64 would say barged it in the end i just i would play for hours and hours a night up at, like toward the end I think it took me something like half a year more to do like the first three, first two and a half acts. Yeah. 
and I stopped for a, like months at one point. You should. And then when your, I came back, it was just boom, boom, look at, boom. Look at your boom. trophy list and see the dates. Suddenly they started getting really concentrated. Oh, we, we need to check that out. Yeah, and so <clears throat> I got in that second half when I became determined to beat it pretty quickly. I I got more adjusted to the slow pace, the deliberateness that a lot of people talk about, either positively or negatively. I became more accepting of the combat, which I didn't care for a lot in the first one. But I, I started to get into it a little more halfway through. How do you feel about the uh, gun mechanics and the, like, you have to cock the lever and... <laughs> Did you like that? I didn't do shit. Huh? I didn't hardly ever clean my gun. No, I just mean, like... Did you like the fact that when you shoot a gun, you have to reload it, like, like hit the trigger again? I didn't even think it. about it. Really? No. Uh, that was, like, a really strange change to me. Cause I just kept, like, hitting buttons, probably. You just didn't just notice mashing. it? mashing. Yeah. I didn't... You never picked that game apart like that? No. Really? There was too much of it, and I knew I didn't have time. So there are a lot of fascinating little details, like, especially in first person. Um, when you shoot, like, a revolver or lever-action gun, you pull the trigger like on the controller, and your character pulls a trigger. So you pull the trigger again, and he puts another cha- bullet in the chamber, like a lever action, and then you can pull the trigger to shoot again. Yeah, I gotta replay the game. Big time. Because I, I, I think it's the only game the first that's... the first thing about it, but I beat it. ...done anything <laughs> like that. Because in the first game, like, you pull the trigger, and it shoots, and he reloads immediately. So it's just... I don't know, it's different. I'm surprised you didn't notice that. Um, what else do I have to say about it? I don't you know. missed the boat on multiplayer, I guess. Oh, completely. Yeah. I loaded it once. I was like, mm. I think I got shot by someone. I was like, oh, I don't have time for this. Um, the stuff with Bronte. Oh. I wanted more. Yeah, I did too. I wanted a lot more because they really built him up. Yeah. And then when you finally get down to it, I think they realized we spent way too long. We got to like hurry this along. And I liked what Dutch did. Oh, fed him even though, of course, obviously it was horrible, but it was like, I was just like, uh, what was the cool. line where John's like, what part of your philosophy books cover killing or feeding, feeding a man to men. alligators? Yeah, and, he, and he says the part that covers weakness. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> so good. Um, But I mean, I really enjoy the epilogues. I, yeah. I think I was so affected by the ending and Arthur's death, and I was like, I wanted to cling to this universe in a weird way. Yeah. And needed more. And I started to look at it differently and with more weight. And like, this is this is holy. <laughs> this is amazing. Like, this is so good. Like, I have to really appreciate this. And so the idea of going back and doing that from the start with the game is very enticing. Yeah. I enjoyed my second and quite a bit. I love John. John is so amazing to me. And um, to be able to step back into it from his perspective was really great. And to see more of how it connected to the first one was wonderful. Yeah, I, I like the credit sequence when they show the Pinkertons like scoping out his house. Yes. It's, it's like, ooh, it gives me shivers. Now, the bombshell that I am going to say here is I knew the night I was going to finish Act 5. And I knew there was an epilogue coming up. And I knew it wasn't going to be Arthur. I got blackout drunk. And I remember all the way up to the point of the altercation with Micah and Dutch. The, the very ending. Yes. The actual part where... I got the bad ending. Lost it. Wait, what do you mean? Where he gets shot in the face. Oh, Arthur, yeah. I cannot recollect it. Oh, okay. I went back and watched it on YouTube. But there's like, I don't know if I like blacked out or didn't want to see it or like couldn't cope with it and made myself forget in a weakened state. But I remember the music. Was it unshaken? Yes. Yeah. I remember being impacted by that. But the next day when I went back, I was like, oh, God, what have I done? I beat it. And you, I remember you, beating it. You killed it. Arthur by your own hand. And I went back and I was like, I don't remember what happened. I don't remember what what ending I got. But I remember the wolf. I did. It's like I blacked out in the middle when Arthur got shot. You might not have gotten I don't, that ending. I think I repressed it. 
You might not have gotten the ending where he gets shot. He gets stabbed in one ending and shot in one. And the good ending is he just like he goes off to the cliff and yeah. like, <gasps> is yeah. wheezing and watches the, the sun yeah. rise. But it's one of the two. I don't, you didn't get the good ending. I can no, tell you that. that's the only thing for sure. Because I know I saw the wolf. And I remember that. And I remember watching the... I don't know. Um, I remember that song, though. I liked... The, I thought the song was cool. It's okay. I felt it's like... It's not my favorite one. I was floating when that happened. I was just like, this is... The whole soundtrack's fantastic. unbelievable. Including the original, this like... fucking unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a amazing soundtrack. So, I don't know if that puts me in better favor that I was possibly so affected by his death that I blacked out or repressed it because <laughs> I do remember the wolf and the lightning strike behind the wolf. And I remember go- Micah coming out and Dutch being there. But then yeah. between that, it's gone. Ooh. That's what's so scary. And I felt so helpless. That's, was a like lot a, of, that's a lot of time. It was like a wake up call. So then I was like, I can't drink anymore and do this. And I did the epilogue. So I was like, this is wonderful. Yeah. Um, what's the last thing? Oh, yeah, I don't, it was great. That was a great game. Um, I think the first game impacted me more because I hadn't felt anything like that. Yeah. And so that stole what the second game could have done. But I still thoroughly enjoyed it. And I started replaying the first one. It's a fantastic game, too. Which I had originally played on uh, Xbox 360. And I bought a PS3 copy to replay it. I mean, the Xbox One... Oh, the best sure, way to play it. Yeah. It feels so good. I mean, it, but it still works. And I got, I'm, I got to Mexico, and I'm, I think I dealt with all the Reyes stuff, and that's where I am. Um, but I fell off a little bit. I don't know. What happens when you already played a game? It it took me that far, the yeah. high from beating the second one. I was just like, I got, I gotta go back and see more. I gotta see it. Um. So I mean, I don't know. That's Red Dead. That is Red Dead. And I'm definitely going to replay it. Um, I hope I'm not like stealing the spotlight here. No, it's fine. We had to talk about it. That, that was a big momentous uh, occasion for both of us. Try to keep, too. I'm going to try to keep this one faster. I beat Dark Souls 2. Oh, God. Okay. I'm gonna keep Next this subject. Faster. <laughs> um, Royal Rat Authority is coming up. It is. We're going to do Raw. The <laughs> exciting end to the sprawling series. Two episodes. Um it's less what I want to say about the game and what I want to tell you. About Dark Souls? Yeah. Do you remember where you bought that game? It was here. Here, yeah. <laughs> um, some, it comes full circle. I just had to buckle down because I got through like the first two bosses or something and just was like, oh, this is bullshit. I started enjoying the game more about halfway through. It still is a clunky, shitty mess, but there are, what I want to tell you is there are parts of where it's like, okay, that was kind of good. It has small moments that are a little impactful or very memorable, the disjointed appearance of some of the areas are like, you know, going to the, what is the dragon thing in the sky or the whatever dragon's eerie or something something like that that's cool all the dragons are flying in circles over and over but it's still at first like oh wow and there there's a, an orlando moment if you there's will there's some kind of mansion or something i don't know game's really forgettable in a lot of ways but like there's a mansion where like you whatever those stupid uh things that pick you up and eat your head yeah, come out of the cage, cages yeah where you go from like the back of the mansion and then it's just like this massive sprawling vista and a dragon's in a cage and you beat the dragon, but like it's massive and gorgeous. And then you go up an elevator and you're in the big dragon castle. I don't know. I started enjoying it halfway through. I, it's super weak compared to everything else, of course. What about Sekiro? Uh, we finish. All right. You should play Dark Souls 2 one day. I'm not going to. You should do I, it. I refuse. I can't. I don't like the way There's the game moments. feels. It's. I also learned that... I've played the game. I got somewhere in it. I just could not stand it. I beat the, the ruins. Some is intriguing. The locales are interesting, even though most of them don't make sense like they do in the others, even though those don't make a lot of sense either. Um, obviously, the like 
geography is very disjointed, as Matthew Matosis points out in a few areas in his reviews. Um, but I don't know. I wouldn't say don't play it at this point. I mean, I'm saying takeaway. to myself, don't play don't it. play it. Like if you're a fan of one, three, and Bloodborne, play all those, exhaust them, and if you want more, oh, I, I don't. And you don't feel like playing <laughs> Demon Souls because it's on a I do want to play Demon console. Souls. Play Dark Souls too. Demon Souls needs a remaster or just a re-release or like some way I can stream it on PS4. It's such a good game. Oh, this still. is this is funny about you, you remember um, the 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 very like skimpy witch armor in right. the DLC of the yeah. third one. Yeah, first appeared in Dark Souls too. Didn't know that. Uh, yeah. Well, you are in Earth and Peak and yeah, the DLC. Some of that's cool. I don't know. There's a few cool moments in Dark Souls too, but overall, it's just like Ugh. I'm going to echo the sentiment Matthew Matosis said like. As the game's not very good, but I'd rather play it than like a than lot of games. games I, I, so I can get more engulfed and absorbed into it. I can't even do that. That's all I can say. I can't, I can't stand the way that game feels top to bottom. I thought Vendrick was going to be a cool thing in the end. I didn't know that you you meet him essentially halfway through the game and he's a mindless giant zombie walking in a circle at the back of like a cavern near a castle. And you can kill him then or you can like and it's really hard. Or What's can, the final boss's name? Like Natasha or yeah, something? Yeah. Natasiandra something. Um, Nashandra. Nashandra, sorry. But yeah. You, like a normal human name. It's kind of weird how they did Vendrick. Um, he's so hyped up. And like I said, when you meet him, it's like, oh, he's just a dumb hollow zombie walking around like dragging a sword. He's just perpetually running in a circle stupidly. And you can try to fight him, but he's brutal. Or you can like do these weird memories. That's probably one of the coolest parts of the game, where you can like go into the memories of like the past history of Drain Lake. Yeah, I mean that's and, like, a cool visit idea. Some of them, including him, in a DLC chunk, where you see you finally get kind of a payoff you wanted to see of like Regal Vendrick in his time before he went hollow. But yeah, you you beat those memories and you can weaken him in dumb zombie mode and just kill him and you get a trophy. That's okay. it. Okay, I'm finally done with Dark Souls 2. Should we start wrapping up? We're an hour and six minutes in. Um, pretty soon. Obviously, I'm going to have to do another podcast because yeah, we'll so do another to talk one. about. Um, we'll do another one without Red Dead because that took up about Yeah, minutes, and I knew so. it was. This always seems to happen. There's it some, was like work talk adjacent. There's some big game. Man, there's a lot to talk about in the next one. What, about video games or just life in general? Because we should do that instead of Red Dead. Talk. The next one's going to be more life in general okay. and like a few silly topics. Um, I mean, but, we could just keep going and split them if you want. Uh, I don't want to do that. Okay. I want to come back. Are you sure? It. Yeah. Don't don't pressure me. No. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say a few more things about video games so like it can be out of the way. Okay. Obviously, beat Red Dead Two. Yep. Beat Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is the second. More twos. Um, it was fine. Probably won't. I haven't played the third one board. Thank you for your intrepid reporting. Um, I beat Gears 5, oh, which came I out very recently. That. I liked it. Okay. Multiplayer's fun. Um, I really like Game Pass on Xbox. Super cool. There's what a, is that? There's a here? ghost outside. Oh, no, she's back. My God, it sounds oh, like no. someone's revving up a chainsaw. Far Gears is happening. Oh, shit. They got the Lancer. The Locust are here. That's what they're calling um, it. Right? Yeah. Well, they're, they're the swarm the now. The lichens? They're the swarm now. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, that makes sense. Not in Underworld with the lichens. Um, I, you remember I played Far Cry 5 with Mario, and yeah. we were like, it it pretty much sucks, but we had some fun. Well, yeah. Anything's we, better with a friend. We got to the final boss of Far Cry New Dawn, which should have been the DLC of Far Cry 5. Um, most of that game was shitty. Wait, it was a separate release? Yeah. I didn't know that. It should have been the DLC. But it was like a smaller game, right? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't it was like, like a, a budget full, title. It wasn't, yeah. It was mostly just the map of the first one, but they like made it colorful and added a few. So like Blood dark. Dragon when they did that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But um, Far Cry New Dawn compared to... Okay, Far Cry New Dawn makes Far Cry 5 look like a masterpiece. Far yeah. Cry New Dawn is one of the worst things I've ever played, and we couldn't even finish it. It was so bad. That's bad. We were just like, this is the most underdeveloped, shitty, half-baked thing. Fuck Ubisoft. Um, I've been playing a little Division 2. It's fine. <laughs> Um, been playing World War Z with Mario for a dumb multiplayer experience. I've heard that's actually not bad. It's fine. Yeah. It's a spongy zombie. You never played Left 4 Dead, did you? No. Yeah. Same shit, I'm the sure. The only failing of World War Z is that game can't hold up if they don't keep putting out, like, a million new maps. 
because mm. when it launched, there were like five areas with like th- two subdivisions in each, and they get really old really quick. Um, I've been replaying Breath of the Wild. Oh yeah. I accidentally deleted my original file, and I've I've gotten further than I did now in my original file. That game is wonderful. Um, I already know that. And Link's Awakening. And I got Link's Awakening. I'm enjoying that Just a lot. Just came out. Yeah. You better put this podcast up quickly, or it's going to be dated. Yep. <laughs> Um, There's not a lot of editing that needs to be done in this one. That's all I really had outside of the music picks. Did yeah. you have anything to add? No, we can save it for the next podcast. We're running a, oh, we're at an hour and ten, so. Let's hit the picks. Who goes first? You can go first. No, I'll go first. <gasps> yeah, this is a running <laughs> gag now. I'll go first. I'll let you have the, because you thought about yours, so I'll let okay. you okay. bring us out. Um, do you know much about Wu-Tang Clan at all? Other than I could a, say such a, a group. dumb response. What? I know they ain't nothing to fuck with. Yeah, thank okay. you. At least I don't have to say it. Um, I don't know. I don't have much to say. I I forgot to do big research into music picks, so I'm just gonna pick a song that I've been listening or something I added to a playlist okay. recently of old school hip hop. Right. Cool. Ooh. Uh, I'm a fan. Wu Tang basically they're a super group of sorts, and they all split off and did their own thing and put out solo albums mm-hmm. like Raekwon and Method Man and all those guys. Uh, one of the more famous ones is a. Uh, Album by his name is spelled G Z A, but Ooh. they call him the Jizza. Oh, like the Rizza. Yeah, exactly. He was also Wu Tang. Oh, so uh, but he put out an album called Liquid Swords, and I'm picking the title track off of that. So here we go. Hell yes. When the MCs came to live out the name, they had to cut two before some had to snort cocaine to the act the same. Poor he dropped it on that one with the mental plane just to spark the brain. With the building to be born, yo, the result of the track with the watch. <laughs> I'm on a mission that niggas say is impossible But when I swing my swords, they all choppable I be the body dropper, the heartbeat stopper Child educator plus head infotator Cause niggas styles are old like Mark 5 sneakers Lyrics are weak like clock radio speakers Don't even stop at my station and attack While your plan fell with the rep like Amtrak What the fuck for? Damn, my lord, make law I be justice, I sit that ass to the floor Ram the clock to that state pen time, check it with the pins, I'll be sticking with you. Can't stick the crime, can't cool with the wool. Slid off on the DL. I'm Chris, I like that. Like I think the beat is in a style that I miss a lot. Yeah. Now we're all clicky. But um, enjoy a little piano, piano, Keanu Reeves. Piano chord progression, staccato slapping, and some very, very strange lyrics. Yeah. How does one's mind go to these places sometimes? I'm. Often How impressed does he by these things up? clock radio batteries. No, he said lyrics are he said lyrics are weak like clock radio speakers, which is oh. so oddly specific. But it's like I get what he's saying. Uh, he had to be sitting there thinking about. It. Yeah, like it's like McDonald's wh- toy. Like where their mind went is one of the most fascinating parts of yeah. it. And I don't know. It was simple but effective. Sure. And I mean, I've haven't been exposed to Wu Tang Clan. Probably it's, ever. It's my favorite group uh, in terms of hip hop. Whoa. Yeah. Them in a tribe called Quest, of course. And I enjoy like the whole theme that they go for with the with the like, right the kung fu that, like, that's old seventies kung fu. Does stuff. anyone do that kind of stuff? What do you mean? Like, does any rapper or hip hop group today have a sort of like vibe I, like that? I don't think so. Not 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 quite like that. That's a really strange mix of cultures. Yeah, but, I, but it, it works. works. It does. It's work. really interesting. Um, that's a cool pick. And as also as always, thank you for finally bringing hip hop back. Yeah. You know, I have to sprinkle it in. Every He's bringing once in a while. hip hop back. That's me. Yeah, that's Chris. And um, because God knows, I'm very repetitive with my style, so it's refreshing. Well, here you go. Your turn to shine. Right um, I have nothing to say about it. I'm just gonna play it. This is a neat song by somebody who I'm, I'm gonna cast. Oh, neat. Okay. Neat song by somebody who probably well, the singer probably worshipped Bob Dylan strongly and it's a little psychedelic it's a little it's a little haunting it's um, oh this is different for you shut up <laughs> it's purgatory drive by the growlers
was a good pick, Jay. I really like that one a lot. I added it to a playlist right. mid uh, mid listening session. Do you get the Dylan vibe? I do, but it's not it's not quite the like, son of Dylan. It's not of uh, the Wallflowers. I don't but. usually like Dylan, but um, yeah, good bass as you mentioned. Cool little bass I really drive. Like I like to kind of paint a picture like a movie setting almost. Oh yeah. like where I would put the song. Like that's good driving music, yes. but also good walking around at night music. But yeah. Yeah, I think the the shimmeriness of um, the keys kind of has this like reflective like street light, like exactly. neon, neon signs. lights. I mean, that's and the cover, album cover so, yeah. helps, but yeah, that's a cool one. Uh, I don't know, they've got a few other songs that are I all right, that but that one is more of a deep cut for them. So I'm, I don't know why people don't like this one more. It's kind of the best I think they've done. That was really good. I think they just put out an album too. I don't know. This is old. but you you didn't like the rest of the album that's on? No, not, <laughs> not really. at all. I mean, it's fine. It's kind of boring. Mm. This one just it stood does, out. It to doesn't me. sound like that at all. More or less, it just doesn't so- have the same like hook to it that I think this one does. This one's I don't know, haunting in a way and kind of ethereal. Yeah, I like my it a typical lot. mo. That was good. Thanks. Was good. good, 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 good. Thanks, the growlers appreciate it too. All right, well let's wrap it up then. This is it. This uh, is it. This first podcast of probably two more. Yeah. We can see what we can put together. We gotta get the D man. Got, got a little, got a little wet in there. I don't, know, I don't like this. <laughs>